In this video, I will be investigating whether adding cut or underspin to the ball is beneficial when hitting a drop shot. Now in order to test this, I stood roughly 12 feet from the front wall and alternated hitting straight drops, some shots with little to no spin and other shots with a lot of spin. I attempted to control for things like ball temperature by regularly switching each type of shot every couple minutes. In this experiment, I used a blue dot ball. So for my first set of experiments, I placed a target on the front wall. I only recorded measurements when the ball hit that target. The red dots throughout this video indicate a drop with no spin, and the blue dots indicate a shot with a lot of spin. The group of dots on the left represents where the ball landed on the second bounce, and the group of dots on the right are the first bounce. So with this limited sample set, it does appear that on average, the shots with spin landed slightly shorter, but also bounced a bit further. This is kind of what I expected to see. When the ball hits the front ball with underspin, it should shoot down towards the floor a little bit more aggressively. However, because it is hitting the floor harder, it will bounce higher. Although this first data set matches what I would have predicted, I needed a lot more data. For my second attempt, I spent five minutes hitting drops and recorded every shot no matter where it landed on the front wall. This would be closer to a real world scenario. Again, the red dots are no spin, blue dots are lots of spin. You can pretty clearly see that on the second bounce, the shots with spin are landing further back in the court. I think this is because in order to put lots of spin on the ball, I often ended up hitting it a little bit harder. The first bounce, however, there didn't seem to be much difference. So even though the shots with spin were being hit slightly harder, they still landed around the same place as the shots without spin, but bounced further. A couple other points I'll make here. It was easier to be accurate when I did not put spin on the ball. When you first start playing squash, this is quite obvious. Hitting a good drop with spin is harder than hitting a drop with no spin. The other interesting thing to note here is that the best shot with spin and the best shot without spin both landed in the same spot. In my third attempt, I reversed the order I was performing the shots in. This time, I started with spin drops. Now, to be honest, this result threw me off the trail a little bit. You can see that I'm getting more consistent now with each shot. The shots with spin are definitely landing further back in the court. The shots with no spin, on average, landed slightly closer to the front wall, but not significantly closer. This result would indicate that, purely looking at the location of the bounces, it makes more sense to hit drops with no spin. Now you might be thinking maybe shots with spin take less time to reach their second bounce. Well, I also measured the time that most of these shots from when they were hit to when they hit the ground twice. Again, here I didn't really see any difference. Now just for fun, I decided to hit some drop shots with topspin to see what the data would look like. The most notable things in this attempt, I hit a lot of tin. Hitting a squash ball with topspin takes much more skill. It's very likely that you will lose the point. With the topspin drop, on average, my shots landed about 20 centimeters further back in the court. An interesting thing to note here is the distance between the first and second bounce was much shorter. Kind of cool to see. Now last but not least, I wanted to see how close I could get the ball to land to the front wall. To do this, I simply hit lobs. Doing so, I was able to get the ball to land within 10 inches of the front wall. However, this is even harder to do than the top spin shot and your opponent will have lots of time to retrieve the ball before it even hits the front wall. So not really a good idea in actual gameplay. With all that being said, it seems like there isn't really a good reason to put a lot of backspin on the ball when you hit a drop shot. Or is there? Once you reach a certain level, deception and squash becomes much more important. Hitting a drop shot with spin allows you to make contact with the ball with much faster racket head speed. 
This means that your opponent will have much more trouble anticipating whether you're going to drop or drive the ball. Drop shots with no spin can be more accurate and even cause the ball to die faster in some cases, but they are so much easier to read. Your opponent will be able to get to the ball sooner after you play the shot because of this. Now throughout this experiment, I was doing one of two extremes, trying to hit the ball with very little spin, which was quite accurate, but predictable, and trying to hit the ball with lots of spin at the cost of accuracy. In real gameplay, you want to be somewhere in between. You definitely want to make contact with the ball with an open racket face at a speed that you can still make accurate shots, but hopefully fast enough that your opponent can't guess where the ball is going right away. If you aren't sure where this point is, always lean towards having more accuracy. If you make the mistake of hitting tin on your own shot, it doesn't matter how deceptive you are since you just lost the point. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed this video. Give it a thumbs up if you did. Now I will admit, it was pretty difficult to get a really accurate measurement of this experiment. So if you have any ideas for the next time I visit this topic, leave a comment below. As always, you can find more videos like this at thepursuitofsquash.com.